Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you might be watching or listening to this Bible study. It's good to be able to study God's Word with you again today as we work through those opening chapters of the Gospel of Luke. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God Almighty, we again stand amazed in the ways that you use sinful human beings to carry out your good and gracious plans. As we watch these demonstrations of faith, we ask that you would work in us, that we may also trust you in all things and serve you in every way that you allow us to. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the most well-known characters of the Christmas account outside of Jesus is probably Jesus' mother Mary. While there are some who have exalted Mary to a non-biblical status, making her into a godlike figure and attributing her with divine characteristics and abilities, we also want to be sure not to swing to the opposite extreme and fail to recognize the very special role that she played in God's story to bring salvation to the world. So today, let's take a closer look at this woman named Mary and what the Bible does and also does not tell us about her. Let's go to Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Let's stop there. The time frame and the locations are very specific. Six months had passed since the angel Gabriel had appeared to Zechariah announcing John's birth. The same angel, Gabriel, is now sent to make a similar but even more amazing announcement to a woman named Mary. The location of the announcement is significant because God had made it clear in the Old Testament that the Savior was going to be born in the hometown of King David called Bethlehem. And therefore, it seemed likely, at least, that the family of the Savior would also be living in Bethlehem, not 70 miles to the north in this little hillbilly town called Nazareth. Now, the Gospel of Luke includes brief background information about her situation. Mary was pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. Now, as was the tradition of that day, although legally married when pledged to one another, a man and a woman would not begin living together as husband and wife until housing was secured and the wedding celebration took place. So we have Mary waiting for that wedding day. Now remember that the biblical record of angel appearances are very few and far between. The angel Gabriel realizes the shock that his appearance has brought to Mary as it would have shocked any one of us seeing an angel. And so he assures her, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. The Lord was not against Mary, but he was with Mary. In fact, what the Lord had chosen her for was something that was an act of extremely undeserved love for her. Now, before we go on, I just want to stop there for a moment so that we can realize that what the angel is about to announce to Mary was the hope and the dream of really every Jewish girl. God had promised to send a Savior, and that Savior was to come from the nation of Israel. And that Savior then was going to be born of a Jewish woman. To think that God would choose you to be the mother of the Savior was an awesome thought, truly an act of high favor on behalf of God. While this may have been the hope of every Jewish girl, like many hopes and dreams that we have, when, when they become a reality, then it's a little different. Luke chapter 1, verse 29, we go on reading, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. Let's pause there. I, I think it's safe to say that Mary's initial reaction is what any of our reactions would have been. Her head was racing with all of the p possibilities. Congratulations, you've been selected. And then comes the mixture of excitement and anxiousness and fear as you wait to hear what you've been selected for. Gabriel could actually, he saw all those emotions on Mary's face as he says to her, 
do not be afraid, and then repeats, you have found favor with God. And you can almost imagine Mary thinking, I heard you the first time, but what exactly does this favor with God look like? Well, brace yourself, Mary, because the angel's appearance is nothing compared to the angel's announcement. Verse 31, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Look at how the angel's announcement, it just keeps getting greater and greater as he goes on. Mary's going to have a baby. That was a miracle in and of itself since she was a virgin. And, and, and not only is she going to have a miracle baby, the, the baby's name needs to be Jesus because he is going to be like any Jesus previously born. Yes, there were other Jesuses before Mary's son, Jesus. Jesus is the Old Testament name, Joshua, which means rescuer or deliverer. But, but Mary's son, Jesus, was not going to be like the other Jesuses before or after. Why? Because he is the son of the Most High. Yes, Mary's son would be the son of God. And that was critical because that means that he would have the ability to establish a kingdom that will last forever, that will never end. That's what God chose Mary. This girl from Nazareth in his grace for. What's Mary's initial reaction? Luke chapter 1 verse 34. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? Isn't Mary's response extremely realistic? All of that giving birth to the Son of God, whose kingdom would last forever, didn't even begin to, to really register with Mary. She, she was still stuck at the beginning that she was going to have a baby. That she could understand because she understood how babies were made and there was no way, humanly speaking, she could be pregnant. She was a virgin. Gabriel explains, and I use the term explains loosely because his explanation is so amazing that it probably didn't bring the, oh, now I understand, that we usually hope to get with explanations. Just listen, verse 35. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Mary's child would not have a human father. Instead, the Holy Spirit of God would be the one responsible for conceiving the child inside of Mary. This not only explained how Mary would give birth to a baby as a virgin, but also how her son could do all of the amazing things that he came into this world to do. He, he was God himself. Now, while Mary may not have been able to understand all that the angel said to her, she didn't need to understand why? For no word from God will ever fail. What God says, he always has the power to do. His word never fails. And therefore, what does Mary say? Verse 38, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. I actually think that these are some of the most amazing words in the Bible. Second only to I would say Noah's response to God's command to build an ark for a flood that God said was going to come in 120 years. Both demonstrate what faith is. The faith is believing, trusting that God will do what he says, even when it goes beyond the laws of nature, even when we can't understand how it's going to happen, even when it's completely unexpected. May the Lord continue to work in us such a faith that always says, Lord, may your word to me be fulfilled. So what did Mary do next? That's what we're going to look at next time, including what happened nine months later. Until then, have a great day, and we'll see you next time for some more Bible study. Have a great day.